start. So I'm going to take this from a maybe a slightly different perspective. I work for uh, the Washington State Department of Transportation. We're a large public, basically a construction agency. We typically don't want to engage the public because we find that if we engage them, they ask annoying questions like, why are you doing this? And why are you bulldozing my house? And those kinds of things. Um, one of the projects we have going now is a large tunnel boring project here in Seattle, um, down along the waterfront. And as part of mitigation, uh, the Section 106 mitigation, historic preservation for this project, we set up a visitor center. It's called MP31. Um, if you're going to be in Seattle tomorrow and have time to kill, I strongly suggest you go down there and look at it. I think it's open on Sundays. Um, you won't get near it today, I don't think, because of the football game going on. But in December of 2011, we opened this MP31 for Milepost 31 uh, Visitor Center. And the center is, uh, was designed as a destination meant to attract people to the Pioneer Square Historic District um, and to educate them when they came down. So it has exhibits highlighting the history of the Pioneer Square Historic District and Seattle, as well as it provides information on our tunnel boring project. And let's see, there are four main exhibits in the building. It's in a historic building itself. And they, um, each of those four exhibits has hands-on and interactive displays. One's on the history of Pioneer Square, one's on the natural and cultural history of Seattle, and its engineered landscape, um, then a history of transportation in Seattle, and then one on the tunnel boring itself. So where the engaging the public comes in is we worked with the Burke Museum at the University of Washington, and especially the moving land exhibit you see there on your left. Uh, there's video screens, there's interactive uh, displays that show the history of Seattle from before European occupation kind of a landscape view of how the city of Seattle has changed because there's been a lot of infilling of the waterfront and cutting down of hills and things like that. And you watch all that in a timeline as opposed to, and it's actually really impressive, but it was to me the first time I saw it at least. And then on the floor, we have an aerial view of Seattle, kind of you are here and showing all those things like the 1850 shoreline, the uh, 1890 shoreline, that kind of thing. Um, it's won several national awards, we think it was a great way to really engage the public. Um, I do want to point out, kind of along the theme of our lightning striking twice or three times, I can tell you from an agency standpoint, though, lightning really struck. We had um, a newspaper story on this, and it talked about our new museum, and given our political climate of this day and age, it couldn't have been more than 15 or 20 minutes after that story went online before the internet commenters started why are my taxpayer dollars going to fund this total travesty and waste of time and money? Um, which then got our, shall we say, more right-wing Republican legislators also asking those same questions. So two legislative hearings and one unfunded curation and museum exhibit policy study later that my program had to fund. Um, the museum still, or the, sorry, the exhibit center is still open. Um, but it did have a lot of fallout for us as a public agency. The university might not get that, but we certainly did. So lightning struck multiple times. <laughs> I think that was the not one. in a good way, lightning. <laughs> yeah, and not in a good way. So those are just some of the awards it won. All right.